Good morning. In today's class, we will discuss about LTE frequency bands. So the topics which we will discuss today are frequency bands, modes, and subcarriers. As LTE has an aim of one gigabit per second for stationary users and 100 Mbps for high mobility users. It means that in order to carry this much speed, you require a resource. Now, resource is frequency. So, in order to meet this requirement of operators as well as users, 3GBB, third generation partnership project, offers frequency bands in two modes. Two modes is FDD and TDD. It means you have frequency bands in both modes. Either you opt for FDD or TDD modes. Now, FDD is frequency division duplex and TDD is time division duplex. Both modes FDD frequency division duplex, TDD time division duplex. Now, what is there in FDD and what is there in TDD and what is the basic difference between the both modes? This is FDD. If this is FDD, that means frequency division duplex, you need to divide the frequency. This is frequency axis and this is time axis. We have to divide the frequency. So, if this is my uplink frequency and this is downlink frequency. That means this will carry your uplink data and this will carry downlink data. So we have to provide here a space which is channel spacing. Now why channel spacing is required? So that uplink frequencies will not interfere with downlink frequencies. That's why we need to separate out both frequencies and that space is channel spacing. Now, for example, we have the 2100 megahertz band. So this band is divided like this, 1920 to 1980 and 2110 to 2170 megahertz. Now, what is this? This is uplink frequency from 1920 to 1980 and this is downlink frequency from 2110 to 2170 and we have provided a space between this so that these will not never interfere. So how much space? Of 30 megahertz space we have provided with uplink path and with downlink path. So this mode is FDD mode. We have number of bands available in FDD mode. So out of that, band number 6 is not applicable. Band number 7, 14 and 21 which works on 700 megahertz band are the most commonly used bandwidth because less the frequency, larger the distance it covers. So these are the bands available in FDD modes and this is FDD mode like you have to do or you require to divide the frequency. Now coming about the TDD mode. Now this is TDD mode. It means wire to
divide the time. So half of the time you are uploading data and half of the time will be carried on in data. And in between we are also required to give some space. Why? So that they will never interfere. So this is a space or we can say this is a switching time. In order to jump from uplink time to the downlink time, we require to give some space time, but that is my switching time between uplink and downlink. So this mode is TDD mode. For example, band in 1920 to 1980. Okay, no division further, no frequency division. 1920 to 1980 will carry uplink also and will carry downlink also, but division of with the division of time. So in this TDD mode, we have band from 33 to band 43 available. Now, according to the need and according to the usage of the operator, as well as user request, you can opt for any band and you can accordingly plan the frequency. Now, LT offers a some different concept that is not there in the previous simulations. Now, that is of spectrum. How spectrum is distributed among users? I will compare with the rest. Like this is 2G and in 2G I have GSM, GPRS and H. Now this is 3G and this is 4G LT. So in GSM, GPRS and H which is second generation, you have a fixed bandwidth of 200 kilohertz. Fixed. Now in 3G we have a concept or we have 5 megahertz which is again fixed. We have CDMA also. In CDMA we have 1.25 megahertz again fixed. That means in 3G we are using a concept of fixed bandwidth. But now 4G LT offers you concept of variable bandwidth. Or you can say that 4G offers spectrum flexibility. Four G offers spectrum flexibility. It means that it has variable bandwidth concept in which bandwidth ranges from 1.4 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 5 megahertz, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz. You can opt for the frequency or the spectrum as per the requirement and the usage. For example, I have two areas, area 1 and area 2. Here, I Required to provide high mobility service data, internet access like the um, some metro trains. I need to provide here the metro is moving with high mobility. I need to provide air internet access with good speed. So you may opt for high bandwidth. And you, here in this area, you don't require much speed. So why to 20 megahertz is required over here? You can opt for this bandwidth. So. This is as per the request and this is as per the usage of the operator. Now, number of subcarriers concept that how subcarriers are calculated. Subcarriers means this is, okay, this is my 20 megahertz. Now, I have number of subcarriers here in this 20 megahertz to carry my data as well as my signaling. So, how the number of subcarriers are calculated? Like, we will take the maximum, which is 20 megahertz. Now, as per the request, as per the rule, I have to leave 10% of whatever given to me. Now, 10% of 20 megahertz, 2 megahertz, I have to leave. That means total available. 
total available bandwidth is 20 megahertz but useful bandwidth is 18 megahertz because 2 megahertz I have to leave as per the specifications of 3GPP okay so now this is 20 megahertz so I am leaving here one and here also one so I am left with here only 18 megahertz now calculation process now we need to calculate number of subcarriers so subcarriers will be total bandwidth available that means available to 15 kilohertz now why 15 kilohertz because e subcarrier in lt is of 15 kilohertz remember this each subcarrier in LT is of 15 kilohertz and, just, and when we divide it the number is 1200 that means in this 18 megahertz useful bandwidth or 20 megahertz bandwidth I have a total number of subcarriers as 1200 so 1200 subcarriers are there to carry data as well as signaling process Whereas if I compare with other like 15 megahertz, I have 900. Then with 10 megahertz, I have 6. And this number goes on decreasing. Why? Right? Because the subcarriers come in less. That's why you have less speed. You have less speed in your 1.4 megahertz. Whereas as the subcarriers are increasing in number, so number of subcarriers will increase. So, this is as per the request that you have to opt for which bandwidth concept in a particular band. The calculation is same and the number of subcarrier calculation is also same for the rest of the bandwidth or rest of the bandwidth also. And you have to leave only 10% of the actual bandwidth given to you. Now, the concept of Resource block, but what is resource block? Again, I will compare with frame formats of previous generation that is 2G and 3G. So, if this is a frame of GSM, so GSM has the total number of, if I start from 1, 2, that means GSM will give you total number of 8 time slot. And duration is 4.615 milliseconds. Total number of 8 time slot and the full duration is 4.615 millisecond. And this is the frame format of GSM. Now 3G. 3G. G has total number of 15 time slots and the duration is 10 milliseconds. That means almost double to that of GSM frame. The 3G is of frame 15 time slot and also the double the time duration from almost 5 to 10 milliseconds. Now comes 4G. 4G has not increased the size of the frame, has not increased the number of time slots of the frame. That means 4G has used some different concept that in one particular frame you have a number of blocks. In a particular frame you have a number of blocks and the duration is constant as that is in 3G. That means 10 milliseconds and number of blocks in this frame is 10 10 so in 4g i have 10 no time slots here in this we have to this is my block so i have in 4g i have 10 blocks i'm writing here blocks and 10 blocks is of 10 
milliseconds. So one block will be of one millisecond. If whatever you are transmitting in one millisecond is TTI. TTI stands for transmit time interval. That what is the time for your interval? So in this one millisecond, that means in one block, there is in this block, there is your data, your signaling. That means you are transmitting in only and only one millisecond. TTI, you can calculate the TTI of 3G also and you can calculate the TTI of 2G also. So here in this case, the TTI will be 4.615 divided by 8 and here will be this 10 millisecond divided by 15 and so the calculation process that TTI of this is higher as compared to the previous generation. So this is all for today. Rest of it will continue in next class. Thank you so much.